are our hiding place. We are our strong tower, our refuge, our security, our shelter, a very present help in the time of need. We turn our eyes towards you and we declare that our eyes are on you. Our security is in you. Our confidence is in you. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Because you are our defender. You are the mighty man of war. Holy Spirit of God, we welcome you tonight in your glory, in your power, in your might, in your majesty. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you because there is no storm that we face that you are not bigger than. And we thank you that those issues that overwhelm us, you are able to take care of them. And so we declare tonight, when our hearts are overwhelmed, lead us to the rock, the rock that is higher than us. Spirit of the living God, take control in this place tonight. Let your word come with great power. Let it come with life-changing authority. Let it come with the burden removing, yoke destroying, storm stealing anointing in the name of Jesus. Set your people free in this place and glorify your name in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Somebody give the Lord some praise tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Before you take your seat, Give a warm handshake or a big hug to two or three people and just speak a blessing into their lives tonight. Come on, do that. Well, I want to welcome you back tonight in the name of Jesus. And if you're coming to church for the first time tonight, I want to welcome you warmly. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are determined to rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad you made it to the house of God tonight? If you're coming for the first time, recognize you're not here by chance or by accident. You're here by divine appointment, on purpose, for a purpose. God brought you here to bless you, to change your life and uh, make sure you do not leave without receiving that blessing from God. Okay, are you ready for the word of God tonight? Okay, please turn your Bible with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Matthew 7, and uh, let's read verses 24 to 27. Our foundation scriptures for this series we commenced this morning. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, whoever hears the sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house. And it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears the sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. To help me preach tonight. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, recognize your hiding place. We learned this morning that the storms of life are inevitable. Regardless of who you are, storms will come to you. You will experience storms. You will go through storms. No one is exempt from the storms of life. Whether you are rich or poor, young or old, literate or illiterate, born again or not born again, uh, you, whether you pray or do not pray, whether you are black or white, it does not matter. You will face storms in life. We also learned that how you come out of a storm will be determined by how you go in to the storm. What you become as a result of the storms that you experience will depend chiefly on how prepared you are for the storm. So we learned that you have a responsibility to prepare yourself for the storms of life. You must be building your life with a storm in mind. We examined two men this morning, one whom Jesus described as a wise man or a thoughtful man or a man who makes decisions from within and another man whom the Bible described as a foolish man. The wise man was prepared for the storm because he built his house on the rock the foolish man was not prepared because he built his house 
on the sand. And the Bible tells us, sure enough, in the fullness of time, the storm came, the rain fell, the wind blew, the floods came, and the Bible says they beat against that house. One house stood and one house fell. We define the storm as a violent disturbance, a sudden attack on a secure position. And who hasn't been there before? Where you wake up in the morning, everything is fine. And by the time you go to bed, everything is up in the air. There is a, a big upheaval. You are confused and you wonder, where in the world did that come from? How could I not know that that was coming? We agreed that there could be marital storms, there could be relational storms, there could be financial storms, there could be health storms, business storms. In every kind of area of your life, storms can come. And we'll learn that it is not so much what you are building, but what you are building on. And so we were encouraged this morning to focus intently on our spiritual well-being. Many times we neglect our spiritual well-being, not realizing that that's what holds our lives together. And people make decisions that compromise their spiritual well-being and put their relationship with God in an endangered position. Now, things don't go awry overnight. And why? Because the storm has not yet come. But sooner or later, something will come to challenge your secure position and your, uh, your security. And if the center does not hold together, everything will fall apart. Well, we're going to take that truth to the next level this evening. One of the things I said in concluding this morning was that there are different reasons why storms come. And I talked briefly about two of them. Number one, I said we live on a sin-cursed planet. Who agrees with that? In the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 17, as part of the judgment for man's disobedience to God, God said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of, voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In the book of Romans chapter 8, from about verse 17 as well, the Bible begins to talk about the fact that the whole of creation is frustrated. There is a frustration. And because of that frustration, because it has been subjected to what the Bible calls futility, or in some versions, vanity, the earth from time to time reacts in violent eruptions. So we find things like volcanoes, things like earthquakes, and things like inclement weather. And they are the, the responses or the reaction of the earth to the bondage of sin and corruption that has been placed upon it. We have to contend with an earth that is sin-cursed. And because the earth is sink us, thing will, things will not always run on rails. Things will not go according to plan. Things will not always be as we desire them to be. Things will not remain the same. There is a trend and a tendency to shift things from a place of order to a place of disorder. Who's hearing me tonight? Number two, we agreed that there is also a devil on the loose. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil. Ha, hallelujah. Who knows you have an adversary tonight? The Bible says he's prowling around. And so he's not chained in one place. We all wish we could do that. We all wish we could do that. And we bind the devil from time to time. Yeah, now you can bind the devil from a particular activity. But listen, you ain't going to keep the guy from moving around. This is the time that he's allowed to do that. And the Bible says in prowling around, he has only one intention, only one motive. He's looking for somebody to devour. He's looking for somebody to destroy. When I speak about uh, how to deal with storms next week, I will tell you the sort of things that storms come to do in our lives. They come to bring discouragement. They come to bring despair. They come to bring disappointment. They come to bring destruction. And they come to bring delay. And so the devil is prowling around looking for someone to devour. Come with me now to Revelation. Revelation chapter 12. And let's read verses 10 to 12. The book of Revelation Chapter 12, verses 10 to 12. The Bible says, uh, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, 
Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Because he knows that he has a short time. Did you see that in your Bible? We have a devil who is right now in the final stages of a frantic, frenetic panic. And in, the, in those stages, the devil is on a rampage to cause destruction. Now, those are just two reasons why storms come. I will talk to you next week about other reasons, especially those reasons that relate to you. But there are those reasons where storms come that are not particularly your fault or your responsibility. Now, there are some storms in life, please stay with me, some storms in life that you can do something about. There are some storms you can address. There are some storms you can confront. There are some storms you can overcome. We will look at those in greater detail next Sunday. But today, I want to talk to you about those storms that you can't do anything about. There are some storms in life, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. There are some storms in life you have to sit out. Hello. There are some storms you have to ride out. Just hold on to something until the thing is over. Now, it is those storms of which I want to speak today. Now, turn your Bible with me, please, to the book of Psalms, chapter 91. Psalm 91. And let's read from verse 1. 16. Psalm 91 verses 1 to 16. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. What are those, ladies and gentlemen? Storms. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Someone say amen. amen. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, God is speaking, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Hallelujah. My focus tonight is on verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in stormy times. Talk to me, somebody. We are sailing in stormy weather. We are living in the days where the hearts of men are plagued with uncertainty. People have no idea what will happen to them from one day to the next. Some nations are sworn enemies of terrorists and they will stop at nothing to strike against those nations. Our nation is one of those nations. Hallelujah. And people are in the desert. There are people who don't fly anymore because they're not sure that if they take off, they're going to land. And there are people who do fly, but every time they get on a plane, they tell themselves, if I make it to the other side, well, we will see. I, I remember, um, 
uh, we, were, we were going on a flight and we, there was a lady making a final phone call, phone call before she boarded. And, and she said something, I can't remember exactly how she put it, but she said something to the effect that um, um, if, if we arrive, I will call you. And I'm like, what do you mean if we arrive? Of course we will arrive. But reality is, ladies and gentlemen, we're living in those days. We're living in those days. You and I have absolutely no idea how many terrorist attacks on our city have been foiled that we have not even seen in the news. And we're living in the danger. We're living in the danger of plane crashes. We're living in the day of bomb explosions. We're living in the day of chemical, in the day of chemical attacks in our, in our underground. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in stormy times. And you had better have something to make your security during those periods. Now, the reality is there is very little in the natural that you and I can do about the terrorists. Very, very little in the natural. But the Bible says there is something that you have going for you. It is a hiding place. Tell your neighbor, recognize your hiding place. Now, I want to challenge you tonight to take hold of this truth that I share with you and hold on to it. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 25, the book of Psalms chapter 25, and let's read verses 12 and 13. Psalm number 25, verses 12 and 13. Who is the man that fears the Lord? He shall teach him in the way he chooses. He himself shall dwell in prosperity and his descendants shall inherit the earth. Now, let me read that passage to you in the Living Bible. It says, where is the man who fears the Lord? God will teach him how to choose the best. Do you think that's a good thing? God will teach him how to choose the best. He shall live within God's circle of blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, for every covenant child of God, for every man or every woman that fears the Lord, God draws a circle around you and he calls it a circle of blessing. Now this is the reality. When you are at home, that circle of blessing is with you in the house. When you step out, guess what moves out with you as well? That circle, there is, a, if you like, there is a no-fly zone. There is a no-penetration zone. There is a safety zone that God creates around his own people. And wherever you go, that zone goes with you. My goodness, are you hearing me tonight? No wonder God said you will be blessed in the city and you will be blessed in the field. You know the reason why? It's not that because the blessing is in the city or the blessing is in the field. Is because you are taking the blessing with you wherever you go. Hallelujah. And it's important for you to know that. And so when I come on a plane, I, 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 I'm tempted to tell the security men, don't bother checking people on this flight. Don't bother checking their luggage. Because I am on this plane, there, this, this, there is a circle of blessing that is contagious and infectious that paralyzes every demonic activity. And if there is a guy on that plane who wants to kill himself, he will fall asleep until we land. Are you hearing me? And I want to challenge you today, as we speak about the storms of life, you need to know your hiding place. So the question today is, when the storm begins, do you know where to run to? The truth is a lot of believers don't. That's the truth. A lot of believers don't know where to run to. So what do they do? They go helter, skelter, hither, thither. Confused. Running around like headless chickens. And all you need to know is one location. One location. From time to time when we have an event in this building, we show a fire safety video. And we tell people, know where the fire exits are. But there's also something else we tell them. We say, in case there is a fire, listen to instructions, there is a fire assembly point in St. Mary's Park next door. And so everybody has a location in mind. When trouble begins, just head for that direction. Now, the, the problem is that many people don't know where to run to when there is trouble. So instead of running into safety, they run into the trouble itself. 
And I want to challenge you today. You have to locate your hiding place. You have to recognize it. You have to map out the route to your hiding place. You have to do test runs to your hiding place. You know, a couple of months ago, the government sent leaflets into our homes. And they said, if there is an emergency, this is what you ought to do. They told you how to locate uh, uh, exits from your home. They told you what to do if there is a fire outbreak. And they gave us all kinds of instruction. You know what they're simply teaching us? They're simply teaching us how to recognize our hiding place. In the days of the Second World War, London in particular came under intense attack from Nazi bombing. And so from time to time when the planes began to fly over London, there would be a siren that would go out over the city. And you know what people would do? They would come out of their homes and run into the underground. So everybody was trained to calculate how long it takes from your front door to the door of the nearest tube station. It's because they recognize their hiding place. Tell your neighbor, recognize your hiding place. Go back with me. Go back with me to Psalm 91 and let's look at a few more verses in Psalm 91. Psalm 91 verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Listen to the Amplified Bible. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only a spectator shall you be. You yourself, inaccessible in the secret place of the Most High, as you witness the reward of the wicked. My friend, you become inaccessible. You become inaccessible and confusion can be breaking out around you. Devastation can be breaking out around you. Pestilence can be breaking out around you. You must learn to know how to be secure in your hiding place. Sometimes storms arise in the place of work. There is, a, there is an economic situation. They begin to fire people left, right and center. Everybody's secure position comes under attack. The Bible says you are meant to be a spectator, not a participant in that storm. Are you listening to me? So you need to learn to detach yourself from those storms. Oh my God, is somebody hearing me today? You need to learn to detach yourself. There are people who can't sleep at night right now. They can't sleep at night because they don't know where the next attack is going to come from. But the Bible tells me in Colossians chapter 3 verse 3, the Bible says your life is hidden with Christ in God. Oh my God. Did you catch it? Your life is hidden with the anointed one and his anointing in God. For the enemy to touch you, he will have to go through God and go through the anointing and go through the anointed one before he comes to you. Are you listening to me? And you need to learn to be secure in that. Now somebody may be looking at me today and saying, Pastor Tayo, what are you getting exercise about? Everything is okay for me today. Listen, this message is not for today. This message is to prepare you for the day that the storm comes. Remember what we said in the morning, it will come. It will come. It will come. When we show the fire, if a fire starts and we start showing the video, it is too late. So we show the video and remind you of your hiding place before you need to run to that hiding place. So you need to remember that you have a circle of blessing. You have a place that is inaccessible to the enemy. The Bible tells us that darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the people. But the Bible says the Lord will arise over you. And the Bible says he will, his glory will be seen upon you. You are marked. You are different. And you need to recognize that. You need to be bold. You need to be strong. You need to be confident. I like that song that says our confidence is in the Lord. And that's the truth. The Bible says you should not cast away your confidence which has great recompense of reward. The Bible tells us that in the last days, Luke chapter 21 verse 26, that men's hearts will fail them for fear. And they will be looking after those things that are coming upon the earth. Hey, news flash, we are living in those days. We're living in the last days. People who escape terror attacks are destroyed by volcanoes. People who escape volcanoes are destroyed by earthquakes. People who escape earthquakes are destroyed by hurricanes and tornadoes everywhere. The weather in the world has gone crazy. Have you noticed? 
gone totally crazy. Hallelujah. So the Bible says there is something called darkness that is coming upon the earth. But we are children of light. There was a three-day period in the land of Egypt that the Bible says darkness settled upon the land. The Bible says the darkness was so thick you could touch it. But the Bible says there was a place where there was light. It was in Goshen, the camp of the people of God. Children of God, we are children of light. And we can expect light. When darkness covers the earth, we can expect the light of God to be upon us. We can expect his glory to settle upon us. Is somebody hearing me today? All right? So remember that you have a hiding place. God is called by many names. In this whole concept of hiding place that I'm talking about, in scripture, he's called by many names. Let's open a few Bible verses right now. Turn your Bible with me uh, to um, Exodus 14. Verse 14, Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. 